severe period of food shortages and widespread hunger were taking place in numerous parts of Ethiopia. Natural calamities including drought and crop failures as well as the political unrest in the nation were the main causes of the famine. The government was fighting a civil war with a number of rebel organisations which made the concentration on the battle result in the neglect of infrastructure and agricultural growth which compounded on the results of the drought. Hunger, starvation and mortality were common throughout the famine and according to estimates the famine claimed the lives of at least a million people and perhaps as well as a hundred thousand more. How did this change though? On October 23rd, 1984, BBC News reporter Michael Burke and a crew visited the town of Karum, a remote region in northern Ethiopia. This place, say workers here, is the closest thing to hell on earth. The report featured starving children and adults, emaciated bodies and just heart-wrenching scenes of desperation. The news shocked the nation, motivating its citizens to flood relief agencies such as Save for Children with donations. The world itself was taking action with the news report invoking a call to arms for everyone, including Bob Geldof, the lead singer of the Boomtown Rats, who along with Ultravox lead singer Mature set their eyes on raising their own donations for the people of Ethiopia, proposing an idea to create a record for charity, including some of the most popular British and Irish musicians at the time. The band itself though would help set the foundations of an idea of the unthinkable at the time, an idea that would bring the whole world together, a global concert that would define a generation. It's 12 noon in London, 7 a.m. in Philadelphia, and around the world it's time for Live Aid. Seven million people are threatened by starvation. It's Christmas time. After the huge success of Do They Know It's Christmas, Geldof wanted to do more, like a live concert to raise for the funds. Culture Club members Boy George and John Moss proposed to Geldof that it should be organised like a benefit show. Geldof already had sights on holding a dual venue anyway, with the show later simultaneously taking place in London's Wembley Stadium and Philadelphia's JFK Stadium, with an estimate global audience of 1.9 billion people. The lineup itself featured some of the most influential and most iconic musicians of the era, including Queen, U2, Paul McCartney, Madonna, David Bowie, The Who, Elton John and just many more. Although it should be said, Geldof's ways of acquiring these musicians to perform were quite questionable with Live Aid production manager Andy Sawek stating Bob had to play some tricks to get artists involved. He had to call Elton and say Queen are in and Bowie's in. And of course they aren't. Then he'd call Bowie and say Elton and Queen are in. It was a game of bluff. Furthermore, Geldof would receive some criticism during the live show when he was reprimanded for his choice of words. When seven hours into the concert in London, Geldof had inquired how much money had been raised thus far. When being told about 1.2 million, he is said to have been sorely disappointed by the amount and marched to the commentary booth where David Hepworth were attempting to provide a postal address to which further donations could be sent. Geldof interrupted him in mid flow and shouting, We're probably going to get the address just, first, aren't we? No, let's fuck the address, let's get the numbers. <laughs> Because that's how we're going to get it. Although the phrase, give us your fucking money, has passed in folklore, Geldof has stated that it had never been uttered. The show ended as the general public remember it fondly, with the musicians all on stage together to sing the Christmas single that began this whole story. The one million fundraising goal surpassed expectations and was raised to an astonishing 150 million. Everyone concluded that Live Aid brought attention to the crisis in Africa, prompting governments and organisations to increase their efforts to combat hunger and poverty in the region. And everything was resolved. Right? Spin, a now defunct music magazine, published an expose on Live Aid's actions that focused on the repercussions for Ethiopia. It claimed that Geldof deliberately ignored warnings from the French humanitarian group Médecins Sans Frontières, who had complained directly to him even before the concert about the role of the Ethiopian government under the Dreg leadership. Mingisku Hale Meriam, whose government through the civil war were very much accountable for the causes of the famine. And with the show working with Meriam directly, much of the relief funds intended for the victims were in fact siphoned off to purchase arms from the Soviet Union, thereby exacerbating the situation. Geldof responded by deriding both the articles and French group who had been expelled from the country, reportedly saying, I'll shake hands with the devil on my left, and on my right, 
to get the people we are meant to help. Similar claims were made at the time by the BBC that charitable funds were siphoned off to aid the war by a rebel organisation that were fighting the government and Treg leadership. The BBC have since apologised 24 years later to the Band Aid Trust who were upset about the allegations made against them and claimed that there were no evidence that money had been diverted. Brian Barder, a former British ambassador to Ethiopia, stated that the diversion of aid that the BBC initially claimed was only relating to aid given by the United Nations and not live aid funds. It could really be argued that live aid was only thwarted by war. It is unfortunate that war remains a prevailing reality in our world. Tragic events like the terrorist attacks during the Ariana Grande concert, the ongoing Ukraine-Russia conflict and just various other instances of violence and conflict underscore the persistent challenges we face as a global society. Alongside these conflicts and crises, poverty continues to afflict a significant portion of the world's population in instances of injustice, such as the the murder of George Floyd which serves as stark reminders of the need of systematic change across many areas of society. While humanitarian events and initiatives like Black Lives Matter are crucial steps towards addressing these issues, it's clear that merely creating something like another live aid is not sufficient to completely eradicate the prevalence of war and its negative consequences. In my opinion, to truly tackle these challenges, a holistic approach including diplomacy, long-term strategies and grassroots movements is necessary to transform our society into a more peaceful and equitable one, as only then we can hope to navigate a path towards a world where humanitarian efforts aligned with governmental efforts can finally create a world of unity and peace. Thank you for listening.